Hi folks, welcome to this biomechanics video on linear motion or linear mechanics. Now linear, surprise, surprise, means traveling or things traveling in a line. Hence why the word line is in linear, in a straight line. So as it says in this text here, this is the movement of a body in a straight line and there's an arrow there just in case you didn't know what a straight line was. Uh, where all parts move the same distance in the same direction over the same time. Now for an object to travel in a straight line, the force that is being applied to the object must travel through the object's center of mass. Now I've done a video on center of mass balance and stability. So if, you, if you're struggling with center of mass, it's worth having a look at that just to recap it. But it's it just a very simple example. Now imagine this circle I've just drawn here is a football and you want to kick the football so it travels in a straight line. Now the red dot I've just drawn there represents the ball's centre of mass, centre of gravity. Remember everything in that direction weighs the same in that direction, everything in that direction weighs the same as that direction. Now if I apply force straight through that centre of mass, so if I kick the ball and I put the force right through the centre of the ball, that ball will then travel in a straight line. It will have linear motion. So in order to make an object travel in a straight line, we've got to apply a force straight through the center of mass. I'm, I'm gonna do a video to do with angular motion. If I was to apply a force outside of the center of mass, if I was to, sorry, hit the ball and apply force there, that is going to have the effect of causing swerve on the ball, but I don't want to do that. In linear motion, I want to apply force straight through the centre of mass so the ball travels in linear motion. Now, if you think back to Newton's laws of motion, this is very, you know, linked to Newton's first law of motion, the law of inertia. A body will move with constant motion indefinitely once a force is applied. But we know that doesn't happen on planet Earth because there are always forces being applied to objects, gravity, air resistance, friction, drag, things like that. But for the purposes of this, if you apply a force straight through the center of mass of an object, that object will then travel in a straight line and we call this linear motion. Don't forget that also applies to human beings. If I apply a force straight through my center of mass, I will also travel or run in a straight line. Now there are a few key terms and uh, calculations we need to know when we're looking at linear mechanics. So one of them is distance. So distance is the total length of the path covered from start to finish and is measured in meters. So the example I put there, the distance covered by a 400 meter runner would be 400 meters. Now displacement is very similar to distance in that it's measured in meters as well, but it is the shortest straight line route from start to finish. So the same 400 meter runner will have run a distance of 400 meters, but their overall displacement will be zero meters as the start and finish point is the same place. Now that's worth knowing. Now, obviously that's not gonna give as much useful information if you do displacement divided by uh, time, if you're trying to work out velocity, which is what we're gonna look at in a second, but I'll come to that in a minute once we've dealt with speed. Speed is the rate of change of distance. Every time we, we have rates of change, we effectively mean divided by time. So speed is measured in meters per second and it's distance in meters divided by time in seconds. So 100 meter runner, what is their speed if they do 100 meters in 10 seconds? It would be 100 meters divided by 10 seconds, which would be 10 meters per second. Now velocity is the rate of change in displacement and it's calculated by displacement divided by time. Now it's very, very similar, almost identical to speed. But the example I gave you above about this 400 metre runner, if you did their overall displacement, it would be zero. And it might have taken them 50 seconds to do one lap of the track. So you're left with zero displacement divided by 50, which is useless information. So what biomechanists do is, they break a 400 metre race down into 50 meter intervals. So they've got a displacement of 50 meters divided by the time it took them to do those 50 meters. And that will allow you to see 
where your athlete had highest velocity, where they had lowest velocity, and that allows you to start to put a training program together. If I know my athlete's got amazing velocity at the start, then it peters out down the back straight, and I don't really want it to do that. That's something I need to work on in terms of their strength and conditioning and their training. Now, acceleration is the rate of change of velocity and can be calculated by the following equation. Now, what you've got is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Now, that can be quite confusing when you're struggling to do it, but let, let, me, let me look at it this way. Let's say you've got a 50 meter swimmer and you do a time for every 10 meters over those 50 meters. So I'm gonna time the swimmer up to 10 meters, then up to 20, then up to 30, then up to 40, then up to 50. What I can do is, with each of those 10 meter displacements, I can divide it by the time it took her to do each of those 10 meters. So what I have is I have five velocities for the 50 meter uh, swimming race that she does. Now what I can do is, I can take one of those velocities, let's say it was the velocity for 20 to 30 meters, and that would be a final velocity. And then I minus it from the initial velocity for 10 to 20 meters and divide it by the time. It will tell me how much she accelerated or maybe even decelerated over that portion of the race. So final velocity just means the velocity at the end point Initial velocity is velocity at the start point, and the time is how long it took you to get from the start point to the end point. The more you practice these questions, the more it makes sense and the more you can make use of the information. Now, deceleration is the exact same equation up here. What would happen is, if you were to do the acceleration equation and you were to get a negative number, a minus figure, then this is showing that the athlete is clearly decelerating and they are slowing down. If you do this equation and you get a positive number for acceleration, it shows that the athlete is accelerating and they are getting quicker. So there isn't a different equation for deceleration, acceleration. It is the same equation is whether the number that you get here is positive or negative. Now, don't be phased by these graphs. We all hate graphs, don't we? If we're not maths inclined, so it can always, always be a little bit uh, concerning for us, but these are nothing to worry about at all. Once you've done various equations to do with velocity and speed and things like that, you can plot the information on a graph, and these graphs can be quite useful in telling us about the motion of an object. Now, what we've got here, it's always really important to check the axis. We've got distance and time graphs for each of these. So what you might be given in the exam is a distance time graph to analyze. Now, what we've got here Distance is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis. So as time is ticking by, distance is not changing on graph A. So what this is showing is that if this is a performer, they are simply standing still. As time is ticking by, the distance is not increasing or decreasing. So on this distance time graph, A is someone standing still. Whereas on B, what we've got is we've got someone increasing their velocity. So what you can see is as time is ticking by, someone is running away from me. Their distance is increasing. So distance is increasing as time is going by. So this person has velocity. Now in graph C, again, this is showing that someone has motion. And again, so they've got velocity. So what's happening here is, as you can see, as time is ticking on, distance is decreasing. So this would actually be someone running towards you. As time is ticking by, they are running, the distance, toward, the distance from you is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? Now in graph B, we've got similar to what we've got in graph B. As time is ticking by, distance is increasing. Now what they're doing here is, they're not really increasing distance very, very much, but as time is getting on, distance starts to increase at a steeper gradient. So what's probably happening here is, they are walking away from us, and then they are running away from us. So distance starts to get, further away from us at a much shorter time frame. Similarly, on graph E, as you can see, distance is increasing as time is ticking by, so they're running away from us. But here, maybe they're sprinting away from us, and at this point here, they slow down to a jog and a walk, and the distance is not as far away from us as time is ticking by. 
and F is shown exactly the same as B. But again, this person probably doesn't have as much velocity. Here you've got a steeper graph. So distance is getting greater as time is ticking by. Here, distance is getting greater as time is ticking by, but it's not quite as steep. So they're not moving as fast. Now, what we have on this graph here, again, we've got to check the axis. This is a speed time graph. So this, we're going to have to treat this differently to the ones we've just done over here. So what we've got on a speed time graph is this. As time is ticking by, two seconds, four seconds, their speed is increasing. They're going from zero meters per second to 10 meters per second. So zero to A shows that this person is accelerating because speed is getting faster as time is going on. Now here, A to B, if we go back to this distance time graph here, when it was distance versus time, this was showing that someone was standing still as their distance wasn't increasing as time was ticking by. This is a speed time graph. So when we've got a horizontal here, they are moving, but they are moving at constant velocity. As you can see, 10 meters per second, they are running at 10 meters per second from A to B, which is four to about 10 seconds. So here we've got acceleration, here we've got constant velocity, or constant speed, sorry. When the arrow is going, so when the line is going down, the gradient is going down, we have got deceleration. So this person is now slowing down, their speed is decreasing until they get to a speed of zero. Now here, we've got a horizontal line, and because we're at zero meters per second, here they are standing still, okay? Whilst they go from 13 to 16 seconds. Then we get D to E and we see an increase in speed over this time here. So again, this is showing acceleration and then E to F. Yes, it's horizontal, it's a flat line, but they've got speed here about five meters per second. So this horizontal line represents someone moving at constant speed. Now on this graph, it's very, very similar. What's changed here, we've got to use the right terminology. This is a velocity time graph. So what we can see from A to B, just as here, they're increasing speed, they're accelerating. Here from A to B, they're accelerating, but the terminology is their velocity is increasing. So this is acceleration due to an increase in velocity. B to C, again, they are still moving, they are still running, they are cycling, whatever it is that they're doing, but they are doing it at constant velocity now. C to D, you can see it's much steeper than A to B. So they're accelerating again, but they're accelerating even faster from C to D. D to E, horizontal line, but again, they've got velocity. So D to E, they are moving at constant velocity. E to F, their velocity is going down as time is ticking by. So this is showing deceleration. F to G, again, we have got velocity. So we are going at constant velocity from F to G. And then G to H, they are increasing their velo the velocity once again. So this is showing a phase of acceleration. So we've just got to make sure we check the axis and we use the right terminology when we're using these graphs. Now there's one other key thing that they could get you to analyze and could get you to look at. Now I'm going to leave the text there. I'm not going to read through it because you can pause the screen and read through it in your own time. But a velocity time graph can also look like this. So what you've got is you've got positive velocity there, negative velocity there, and time going on this axis. Now the mistake people make is this. They think that if it's negative velocity, so if it's below this line here, this is all someone decelerating, slowing down. Well, that can't be the case because you've got a line going this way and a line going that way as well. Equally, everything above the line can't be positive velocity because you've got a line going this way and a line going that way. A velocity time graph like this also shows a change in direction. So as it says here, this is forward direction and this is opposite direction. Now it always helps if you can use an example. So let's say this is two tennis players hitting the ball to each other during a rally. So what's happening here is, as the first player, let's say Serena Williams, strikes the ball, she gives it velocity. And the velocity 
Chris has just hit the ball, he's upwards, so it's, it's, the ball is accelerating. But at some point as the ball is travelling, okay, the velocity is ultimately going to plateau, so it's going to reach its top velocity, and then it's going to start slowing down. But as it does so, this is indicating a change in direction. As the ball is slowing down, it's also travelling towards her opponent. Then her opponent hits the ball, gives it velocity, it reaches its peak velocity, and then it starts to slow down and travel back towards her. So this is showing a ball traveling in one direction, and this is showing a ball traveling in another direction. It could be two football players passing to each other. One passes the ball to a teammate, the teammate passes the ball back to their teammate. So velocity time graphs can also indicate changes in direction. Now, I thought I'd finish by just looking at a few questions that might come up and, and various questions that do come up on this topic. The first one is to do with this idea of distance and displacement. So explain how distance and displacement differ in the 200 meter freestyle swimming event. So same things like <clears throat> the measured in meters, both of them are distance is the total ground covered. So in this instance, a swimmer, the swimmer will have done 200 meters of distance in the race. Whereas displacement is the distance between where the swimmer started and finished. So again, in this example, the swimmer would have a displacement of zero meters. 50 meter swimming pool, the swimmer has done up and down four times, and that has led to a total overall displacement of zero meters because he or she starts and finishes in the same position. Now in the next question, what is the average speed of a track cyclist who completes one kilometer in a time of 58.87 seconds. So we need to know equations. So remember, speed is distance over time. Now time is in seconds, but remember that distance is in meters, not in kilometers. If you turn the one kilometer into a thousand meters, we have got distance divided by time, which equals 16.99 meters per second. So you're not going to be given the equations. You do need to know the equations and you do need to know the units and you need to make sure you get them right or else you're not going to get them out. Now the final one, I'm not going to be, I've not got space to draw it below, but it says in the space below, draw a velocity time graph showing the motion of a tennis ball served from player A to player B and returned by player B to player A. Explain the shape of the graph. Now this is one of those graphs, those velocity time graphs where I'm going to have a positive area and a negative area. So if I put a blue pen on here, let's say, so the player is going to serve the tennis ball and it's going to travel over the net from player A to player B and player B is going to hit it back to player A. Now if I draw mm -hmm. that, I haven't got any marks because I need to get some units on there and some terms on there. Now I'm getting my labels on correctly, saying that this axis here is velocity measured in meters per second, and this axis here is time measured in seconds. There are some good marks. Now, what else will get me marks is even though it's not showing positive and negative, saying that this is positive here, this is negative here, and saying that, for example, this is moving in a forwards direction going over here, this is going in a backwards direction, okay? They're the kind of things, when I explain them, because don't forget the question asks you to explain the shape of the graph, they're the kind of things that will make sure you cement all marks. So this video has been about a few different things to do with linear motion, linear mechanics, uh, but it's also been to do with about velocity, distance displacement, all those key terms. Uh, and then I had a quick look at some questions as well. Hope you found it useful, folks.